Yeah. So how come, how come, Andrew, how, Andrew, how come I had to go into the um, software? How come I couldn't just automatically open it? Oh, for the webinars. Hello, everybody. Right. Hello. Oh, so when you do the webinar, you have to log in and then start the webinar. <sighs> Got it. Guido, I can I cannot put on my video. This is Sally. Okay. Okay, Andrew, I really appreciate you helping me at the last minute. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Okay. Oh, the perils of new technology. Ugh, okay. So are we all here? We got Sally. Here who's here? I'm here. Okay. There is Sally. We got two Sally. Who's the second Sally? So. Who's the second Sally? Who's the second Sally? So I can read. I'm going to have to keep my video off just for a few minutes, but I'll put it on shortly. The second one might be Phoebe because I. Oh no, Phoebe's there Phoebe's too. There. I don't know. It won't let me turn on my video either, Guido. Then you can oh, see really? who's, the, who's the real Sally. Who's the real Sally Meadows? Okay. <laughs> All hey, right. Guido, I can't turn my video on as well. This is Callie. Yeah. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my video won't go on either. It says the host has disabled it. Oh, yeah. let me undo. Okay, hold on. Oh, look, some planning commissioners are on as attendees rather than as. I would think they would want to know you were negative. Oh my goodness. All right, hold on. I think I must be on as an attendee because I can't think why else it wouldn't work. No, no. The attendees are actually Anita, David Merrick, Duho, Eric Steinley, John Biggs is an attendee, KMVT, and Whoa. Max Schwarzer. Whoa. So all the panelists are, no one can see the panelists except for uh, Guido. Yeah, I had to come in by putting in my um, email for some reason, which is mm. usually what happens when you're an attendee. Yeah, same thing for me. But you can both talk. That's good. Yes. <laughs> Guido did something to unmute us. He's doing his uh, magic. We just have to let him do the rest of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's magic, but so. Yay. I see a lot of familiar names. Can you hear me? Not that she stepped on my glasses. Yeah, I could hear you, John. Okay. Okay, everybody's a panelist now. Okay. Now, how do I get you guys to see your faces? So that's the thing. All right. Uh -huh. We have control of that. Oh, no, we can turn no. on our camera. No, no it won't have... let us. Oh, right. you okay. do? It says you cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. When I try. You can leave me disabled because I'm just going to lurk. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to figure it out. Hold on. This is a new slot set, set up for us. So turn off my video, always display video, always show video preview when joining a video. Meeting. That show everybody? No. No, you're off. No, it's oh my goodness. We should have just stuck to the old format. All right, hold on. Uh, uh. Hey Guido, it should be under under the settings if you go to the camera and um, under the meetings. I think there is a section where you can turn off or turn on the video when joining the meeting. Double check that one, please. Enable mirror, enable touch up, always display. Do you want to turn off my video when joining meeting? Always show video. Okay. 
joining. No, it's not there. Okay. So this is problematic. Um, we do. Do you need to restart the system with that? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm afraid that. <laughs> yeah, then we, then we could lose the mess yeah. with the system. So. Uh, <clears throat> Give me one more minute, guys, and then otherwise we'll have to figure out next steps. Hold on, let, let me just go back into the Ring Central. I'm watching Guido try to figure it out. Try to. Uh, I don't know what to do. Is it Did he come in? It looks like uh, Guido is talking to IT to get some guidance. So, a little more patience and we'll get there. We go. Got it, Guido. I think that was you.
Speed up, can you hear us? Hmm. Looks like he's still on the phone with IT. Can you hear us, Guido? You're on mute. We're good. We're good. Technology foibles and all, so. You got us through. Yes. Okay. Um, call to order the Planning Commission meeting for September 17th, 2020. Um, tonight, we do have a quorum. Um, I think, sorry, I think everyone is, all the commissioners are here. Yeah, for the, for the record, I see Chair Ahi, Vice Chair Bodner, uh, Commissioner Bresick, Commissioner Lee, Commissioner Merrick, and Commissioner Meadows. Okay, um, perfect. So first up, uh, public comments on items not on the agenda. Is there anyone on the call? <coughs> Excuse me. Hello? Yes, uh, if you could yeah. say, say your name. Hi, I am Max Schwarzer. I'm almost a lifelong Los Altos resident. Okay, um, Yeah, I just wanted to, Two points. One, I wanted to ask the Planning Commission what changes it plans to make in the aftermath of the real debacle around the 40 main development. And it's 500000 of taxpayer money down the drain. I know it's not like it's a, it's a complicated problem, but at the same time, it's clear that something is going to have to change, right? This isn't going to be the last SB 35 lawsuit that gets brought. Um, and I think it's it's clear that the trend in Sacramento is moving in a pro-housing direction. Like Scott Wiener is not just going to go away, right? And so it's probably going to be best if the city is proactively trying to meet those SB 35 targets rather than, you know, getting sued for it. And so I had two thoughts on how that might happen. I'm sure that I know the planning committee has recently moved to uh, liberalize the local regulations on ADUs in response to um, some legislation that happened in Sacramento, but I think it's very unlikely that ADUs are going to be enough to, generally speaking, meet SB 35 targets, right? There hasn't historically been that much demand, and an ADU built by a private citizen may not qualify as affordable or anything like that anyway. So two options, one would be the Redwood City route of just basically drawing a cordon around downtown, accepting that you're going to have a lot of upzoning there, accepting that you're going to have a lot of development there, and just moving with it, right? And the other would be something along the lines of legalizing, say, fourplexes in a certain part of the, certain part of the city, provided that they are um, at least partially affordable. Now, I don't know that either of those is going to happen, but I think it would probably be for the best for the city if we could move in some direction like that proactively rather than you know being sued repeatedly and dragged by sacramento anyway thanks for your time i'll mute myself now great uh thank you max for that um is there any other uh public comments on items not on the agenda would anyone like to speak no okay uh, so then we'll close that. And um, next up, consent calendar, planning commission minutes from June 18th, uh, 2020. Does anyone have comments on those? Or would anyone like to make a motion? On those? I have a comment. Sure, Phoebe. So on uh, page four, on the things that I said, the next to the last bullet, I didn't recommend that ADU permits be reduced. I recommended that permit fees be reduced. And on page three, on my comments, the last one has a floating and and a mystery bullet. So if I said something else, I'd like to know what it is. And if I didn't, they should be removed. Okay, uh, thank you for that, Phoebe. Anyone else with comments on the minutes? No? Okay. Um, so we will close that then. Um, oh, if someone can make a motion then, sorry, on the minutes. I move that we accept the minutes of June 18th subject to the corrections and comments. I second the motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sorry about that. Uh, Chair Ahi? Yes. Vice Chair Bodner? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Bresek? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Merrick? <clears throat> yes. And Commissioner Meadows? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Okay, great. Um, so next up, uh, D20-0001, uh, City of Los Altos Emergency Operations Center. I will hand it off to staff. Great, I'm gonna share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. 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 Great. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Callie Nide. I'm an assistant planner under the Community Development Department. The project before you tonight is a design review application for a new emergency operations center located next to the police station building at 1 North San Antonio Road. As shown highlighted on the zoning map, the EOC building is proposed on an approximately five acre parcel in the, in the public and community facilities zoning district. The site is bounded by Los Altos City Hall and Los Altos Youth Center to the west, the Los Altos History Museum to the south, and single family residences to the north and east. The proposed building will be located at the east side of the existing police station where two portable buildings are currently placed as shown highlighted in red. This slide is a photo of the proposed emergency operations center. The building proposes um, architectural elements that matches the existing police station, such as simple massing, a low pitch gable roof, horizontal eave lines, and wood exterior materials. The materials as shown at the top of the slide include composition shingle roofing, horizontal wood siding, vertical wood siding, aluminum windows, and wood trim details. Overall, the design of the proposed building will have a similar appearance to the existing police station building and the architectural features and materials will integrate well with the site. As shown in the floor plan, the proposal is a 1,541 square foot detached building and contains a central EOC operations room, a conference room, a multi-purpose room, a kitchen, a single user restroom with a shower, an IT room and various storage rooms. The purpose of this building will be to support the Los Altos Police Department for emergency preparedness during a critical incident, a major emergency or a disaster. This facility will be used regularly by the police department as well as other city departments, staff, volunteers in an effort to protect the community. The proposed EOC building is located a considerable distance away from the street so it will not be highly visible to the general public. The structure will have a 646 foot front yard setback where a 40 foot front yard setback is required, a 27 foot right setback, a 210 foot left yard setback where a 25 foot side setbacks are required and a 25 foot rear setback which unfortunately is less than the required 50 foot setback in a PCF district. However, per the zoning code section 14.02.050, city projects located on city property are exempt from their own land use zoning code. So therefore the required rear yard setback of 50 feet should be exempt from the setback requirement. As shown in this slide, the project will include a separate 14 and a half foot wide covered walkway structure that connects the police station building to the proposed EOC building. In addition, the project includes adding an emergency generator to serve the new building, which is located on the south side of the proposed structure. The mechanical equipment is located along the back side of the building um, on the east side and is screened from public view. The parking, the parking is located behind the existing police station building and north of the EOC building as shown in the slide. There are 17 standard parking spaces and one accessible parking space available resulting in a total of 18 parking spaces. Of the 17 parking spaces, there are three electric vehicle charging stations located along the left side of the building. 
The project includes existing landscaping and trees that are generous and inviting and consists of 15 apricot trees, eight coast live oak trees, and two privet trees. The project proposes to protect and preserve 10 of the apricot trees located north and east of the proposed EOC building and all eight of the coast live oak trees located south of the proposed building. The arborist report was prepared by Glenn Reeve from West Coast Arborist and provides specific tree protection measures, including tree protection zone requirements. Overall, the existing landscaping and trees are appropriate for the site improvements proposed. With that, staff recommends positive design review findings for the EOC building. The findings and the conditions have been incorporated into the draft resolution and it can be found in attachment A of the staff packet. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you all for your time. I'm available for any questions. Uh, great, thank you so much for that. Um, any questions for staff from the commissioners? Okay. I, I have one. Uh, 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 yeah, go okay. for it. Sarah. Okay, um, just so the access uh, to that, is that still, so when you access the police um, area, there's that gate that opens up. So is that still going to be the access that you have to enter through the, the gate? Correct. So it's a secure access and okay. you would have to go, yeah, through the down past all the parking um, past City Hall. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions for staff from commissioners? Yeah, I have one. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Is is the canopy uh, element part of this uh, uh, submission or submittal for, for consideration? It is part of the proposal. Uh, do you do you have additional details um, and or sort of structural drawings to illustrate how that uh, canopy will be constructed? So I would. I would defer that to the architect. Um, I, what I do know from a planning perspective is that it's, it's under um, the lot coverage requirement. So there's plenty of lot coverage on the lot. So it's not exceeding. Okay, now I was looking for that information. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find it in the drawing set. So just curious. Okay. Yeah, we could ask the architect. I do have a zoning compliance table in the in the uh, staff report that shows the square footage or the lot coverage is under uh, what is allowed for the lot. Okay, um, any other questions for staff? Okay, um, so now we move on to the, sorry, it's been a while since we've done these. <laughs> we go to the presentation from the architects or public comment, architect. Okay, go for it. I think you have 10 minutes. Okay, so um, <clears throat> good evening. Um, pleasure to be here with you tonight. I'm going to try and share um, my screen. Doesn't look like it's allowing me to do that, though. Jeff, I could share my screen. I, I have your presentation if you'd like. Sure, why don't we do it that way? Okay. Kelly, I just made him a co-host. He should be oh, okay. Able. So Jeff, do you want to try? Yeah, let's try it again. Um, you have the same privileges as Kelly, so. If you go down to the bottom under share. There, can you see it now? No. Okay. So I've tried, tried doing that and, uh, and it's not, uh, Allowing me to, uh, you want to, send it to, to share. Kelly or? Yeah, it's probably better if Kelly just shares her screen. So. Yeah, I could share my screen. Let's see. Sorry about that. Let me see if I. The wonders of technology. Yeah, the wonders of. <laughs> Try this again. Um, 
Okay. Well, uh, again, pleasure to be here speaking to you tonight. We have been uh, working on this project for quite some time, and we're pleased to uh, finally bring it to planning. Um, the the drawings are um, at a um, far enough along to define the parameters of the project. We still have some elements. Uh, one of the questions asked just a moment ago was about the structural design and the canopy, and that is still evolving, but uh, the building itself is where the focus has been here. Um, and so, Kelly, if you wanna go on to the next screen, staff's done a good job of, of giving you the background on the project, so I'm just gonna hit uh, a few additional items. So again, the, the EOC building is located um, on the south side of the existing uh, police building and um, is within the secure perimeter of the police building itself. The project also includes some additional parking and a relocation of the uh, one of the existing trailers on site. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Kelly, um, one of the elements that this project is also allowing us to accomplish is that the current fire access to the police facility does not comply with current fire access requirements. Um, it is essentially a, uh, a dead end and difficult for fire apparatus to get back out from within this site. And so in order to remedy that, uh, we have added <clears throat> the uh, sort of hammerhead or turnaround that you see on the far upper right of this drawing. And then we are also adding a new fire hydrant uh, off the corner of the building um, in order to make sure that um, we're complying with all of the fire department's requirements for fire protection for the building itself. Uh, next slide. So again, this is just a little bit larger view of the um, of the site itself, focusing on the civil engineering elements. So we are uh, extending uh, additional parking and matching grades on the paving. Uh, we do have a new generator that we're putting in to serve just the emergency operations center. So the existing generator will serve uh, as it has been the police station and the new generator will be dedicated to the emergency operations center. Next slide. Uh, in order to provide um, access uh, uh, water for the new fire hydrant, we are extending a water line um, to the uh, south uh, to tap into an existing line and then adding the new fire hydrant as well as providing fire sprinklers for the building itself. Next slide. Um, I think we've covered everything on this slide. Uh, so the floor plan itself. So an emergency operations center is really designed for that worst day that we all hope never happens. Um, and it is intended, uh, it's designed as an essential service facility. Uh, and what that means is that we design to a higher um, level uh, structurally uh, to make sure that this building not only um, allows occupants uh, to be safe within the building, but for the building itself to remain operational, uh, which is a higher level that most buildings are designed to. So the, the hub of this building is the operations center area in the center uh, that's designed to accommodate all of the various personnel that will come to the emergency operations center when it is activated. Uh, the conference room is really a breakout room for smaller groups uh, to do planning uh, while the larger groups are in the operations center. And then we have a small kitchenette and storage uh, and a restroom to support the uh, facility. So obviously, uh, we hope that it never has to be used for its intended usage, um, but the building is designed to accommodate additional police as well as other staff, uh, city, excuse me, city needs for conferencing uh, facilities and, and so on on a more regular basis. Um, so that's, that's the basic floor plan. Next slide. Uh, so uh, as Kelly said, the, the roof design is 
uh, designed to be very similar to the existing PD building, maintain a low profile, and it is designed to be solar ready uh, for panels to be added in the future. Next slide. Uh, so the building uh, elevations, we have a, a max roof height of 17.4. Uh, we're using a combination of horizontal and vertical uh, composite uh, wood uh, siding materials. Uh, next slide, um, and I believe you have all these drawings in your planning packet. So uh, simple building section through here, and then the last slide is just some additional rendered views. Um, next slide, Kelly. Yeah, there we go. Some additional rendered views of the uh, facility itself. So we are um, prepared to move forward quickly uh, to um, finish up the construction drawings for this project and get it out to bid um, once uh, we have heard your feedback and um, hopefully uh, received your approval. So with that, um, that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions you may have for me. Great, uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, does anyone have any questions for the architect? No? Okay. Um, if not, then I will open it up to public comment. Um, is there anyone on the line that has a public comment? Um, I don't see anyone raising their hand. Last call. Okay, then I will close public comment and, and open up discussion. Um, so would anyone like to go first? <laughs> this is always a tough part. Um, I don't should I choose or <laughs> Phoebe, do you feel like going first? <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted, Phoebe. <laughs> I'd like to hear what Duho has to say first because his question piqued my interest, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> He's muted too. Oh, there we go. Yeah, ha happy to oblige and uh, go first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I, I was just curious because I think uh, that, that canopy um, element, uh, well, at least illustrated in the drawings uh, or in the renderings seems uh, quite magical. And uh, I was just wondering how it's actually gonna hold itself up and, and, and what kind of construction it will be. And, uh, you know, just wondering at the end of the day when it's all detailed out and you have the proper sort of dimensions to it, how it will impact the look and feel of it, uh, of, of the, the actual structure itself, and also how it ties back to the, uh, to the police uh, station structure as well. So it's more of just wanting to know, you know, sort of a little bit more about that because it is being considered as part of this package. So I think, um, you know, it's... Um, you know, we we do have the right to understand a little bit better uh, what that uh, what that connection would look and feel like. Um, it's one of those elements that I think, could, if it, if not handled in a careful way, it could just blemish what what is, to me, in my opinion, uh, quite a lovely little structure. Um, so I'm hoping that um, that's that's that wouldn't be the case, and hopefully. Uh, you'll take great care in, in, uh, in looking at that as, a, as an element, as an architectural element. Um, in terms of the, uh, the overall expression, I think it's very much in keeping uh, from your material choice perspective, also from a scale perspective, uh, from the, the formal perspective as well, and very much in keeping with the structures that are uh, uh, prevalent in that precinct. So I think that's... Um, um, I, th I think it'll, it'll blend itself in uh, really nicely uh, into that area. Uh, I do wonder about the nature of the, um, uh, the, the fence or the wall uh, behind the structure and as it, as it you know, backs onto uh, the neighboring structure, what, what, what the condition of that fence will be. I know you have some equipment out there uh, some generators, I believe. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be used. Uh, it's only going to be used during cases of emergency, I believe. But uh, 
um, I noticed that the, there is no screening for, the, for those elements. And um, so it's more of a question, I guess, uh, to the architect, what, what the nature of that, that, that sort of um, fencing or, or division is between uh, the structure uh, visually and, and the, the neighboring uh, structure. Um, in terms of the overall architectural expression, again, I think from a material standpoint, I think it complements uh, what's there. Um, and, it, and, it, and it, I'm sure it will, will fit in well. Um, I, you know, in terms of the overall composition, I think breaking down the, the larger shed with uh, a little bit of a, a change in material, I think helps. Um, one wonders a little bit how you chose where to, where to start and stop the materials. Uh, I was trying to see if there's a was the, if there was a meaningful connection between the inside spaces and what's happening on the outside, but um, I think it's more. I believe it's more of a composition. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but but potentially there could be a little bit more. You know, it feels like the wooden element um, or the horizontal bit um, potentially could work itself. Um, into the into the to the main uh, entry piece or or doorway as well or incorporate that uh, I don't know I don't know if you've uh, played around with some some of those uh, some of those studies elevational studies but um, other than that I I I don't really have uh, too much other comments to to offer at this time I'd like to get a little bit more detail from the arbors uh, I, I'm not sure if they'll be making a presentation tonight or not but it'd be good to hear from them what the impact of this structure has. To, to the chair, we do have the arborist here for questions. So. Oh, okay. Um, do you have any, do you have any questions, um, Duho? Well, is there uh, just a kind of a, a, an overview of the impact of the structure on, on the existing, uh, on the existing trees, landscape? Anything significant that you want to call out? Hi, I'm Glenn. I'm the arborist with West Coast Arborist. Uh, I've been working on this project with the city since 2018. Um, so it's evolved over the time and we've adapted some of what the tree protection measures and what the impacts would be. Um, I don't know if you have any specific concerns, but overall, if done appropriately um, with, with how it gets contracted out, um, I think it will have relatively minimal impact on the surrounding trees. There are some pre-existing issues with some of the trees that will require some mitigation through trimming and maybe some site changes to make those trees a little happier as far as growing conditions go. But um, um, yeah, just provided that the tree protection zones are honored, um, you know, there are a couple trees that need to be removed, but we looked at those trees closely as far as the condition of them and um, the location of things and it, does not seem to be a significant impact to me as a arborist as far as what trees are being removed and once we're working close to. Okay, thank you. Great, um, thank you for that. Um, does any, who would like to go next with comments? I'll go since Duho took the first hit. Thank you, Duho. <laughs> um, I, I had the same question um, about the, canopy because I really felt like this was almost a really special building. It's, it reminded me of projects that people get in architecture school where they say use the least amount of materials, make the most cost effective, make the most structurally effective, and see what you come up with that's really special. And I think Duho touched on it, the changes in the skin, which I I think, as he said, it might have been almost Mondrian trying to see it from an elevation point, but also if it could somehow incorporate some of the physical architectural features, that there's a reason why it changes at a certain point, not just willy-nilly. Mm -hmm. And I think that the canopy, if it hasn't been addressed yet, I looked at it and I thought, sky hooks, okay, well, you can't use sky hooks to hold it up, but what if it was a three-dimensional space frame? So you could put a little money into something that had a little pizzazz that would literally move this to another level from not an ordinary quiet design, but something that has a little more 
special characteristic that I know it's tight budget. I know they've been working on it for years, but it's like close. I feel like close. And the other thing relative to the arborist is not so much the arborist as I was wondering about landscape because mm -hmm. there yep. is no landscape plan and uh, some trees have to be removed and others have to be pruned. And I was hoping there would be some kind of a replacement plan to say, well, we're taking out these trees, but let's put some more over here, for example, relative to people walking by. Um, it's an area that seems inconspicuous, but in fact, there's the path that goes through the, mm, I guess it's the park course. We have a little gymnasium yeah. sort of outdoor thing. People walk by there all the time to get to City Hall and the library. So it might be nice to incorporate a little more greenery or something that fills in what's gonna be taken out in some way. I said this in probably not the most tactful way. I think they did a really good job. There are many good things to say about this. My comment is, it feels like just a little bit more, it could be really special. But they didn't do a bad job, they did a good job. I just want it to be really excellent. Great, um, thank you, Phoebe. Um, I think Ronit had um, raised her hand. Did you wanna go next? Sure, I'll, I'll jump in. Okay. Um, I, I'm supportive of the, of the project. Um, 2020 has taught us anything. It's to uh, invest in preparation for emergencies. So I appreciate that we are doing this. Uh, I think that the, the structure has um, architectural integrity and I, I like the materials they're using. Um, I like how Phoebe described it as Mondrian and I agree that it would, um, if there was a budget, I'd like to see a little bit more of that um, play of materials uh, wrapping around the corners. I, I kind of saw it from the front and thought, felt a little like a stark um, in interruption or a stop of um, materials. And I then I was kind of looking around the rest of it to try to understand it. And so I, even those little things I think would do exactly what um, Duho and Phoebe said is like really make, um, a compact, tight building into something really with a lot of character and um, interest. So I, I, I um, that would be my su suggestion. I think they do a really good job with it, with what you know, being very efficient. Um, both there um, with the space, uh, it's compact, but seems to accomplish what they need. And um, I appreciate that they are keeping some apricot trees. I know that um, community always appreciates that as well. Great, um, thank you. Uh, Sally, did you wanna go next? Sure, yes. So um, excellent comments have been made um, so far and so I'm not going to repeat those. I will note that I think a good job was done on the backside. The windows are um, small. They're not gonna be intrusive to uh, whatever. I think there's also a house that borders part of that. So, um, and I know there's, uh, again, tr tree coverage or, or shrubbery coverage, but still that was a discreet thing. I agree with the comments. This could be um, really special. It could be a courtyard that the, the first responder, you know, the police use and, and everyone, but I do think it's fit to purpose. It definitely should move forward. We want to get it as soon as possible because at the rate 2020 is going, we might need it in the next few weeks <laughs> with the, with the uh, plague of locusts or whatever's coming next. So please, by all means, uh, let's move forward. That's hilarious. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, David Merrick, would you like to go next? Yeah, I thought it was, um, well, firstly, I, I agree with all the comments that it seems very important now more than ever and getting it moving forward is probably the the most important part. Um, you know, I, I, I probably defer to everyone on the on the appearance. I, I thought it looked fine, but I think the comments that everyone has made on uh, possibly making it even better are all uh, fair comments. So that, that's all I got. Thank you. Great. Thank you. 
Um, I'll just quickly go through a, lo a lot of it has already been said, but um, yeah, the material change on the corner. Uh, I also thought it, it corresponded with something. Um, sometimes with the material change, you'll have um, a formal change. So, you know, having that portion maybe pop out or, or having something happen with that, um, maybe something to look into. Um, the front side where you have the doors and, and the letters, um, it feels a little flat to me. I just think that there might be small things to do to kind of articulate the building more, um, uh, especially maybe with the letters, having that become an element um, or, you know, something with the entryway. Um, you can maybe kind of think about how you want to treat that. Um, all those things I don't think would affect the floor plan. So, you know, it's just really just focusing on the kind of outside. Um, as far as the floor plan, uh, I don't really have comments on that because I, I think that it's it serves um, its purpose. Um, the only thing is, I, I maybe I'm wrong on this, but the entryway didn't kind of align perfectly with the loading area across. So I just thought it was kind of a shame that it didn't line up perfectly um, with kind of that open um, kind of loading zone. Um, I don't know if that's something you could look into. Um, the covered walkway, I think that um, what's already been said, I think it, it definitely needs to have some type of um, gesture and not just kind of a, a surface. Um, I, I really liked um, what Commissioner Lee and Commissioner Bresick said about that. Um, so I think you could kind of explore that a little bit and yeah, I mean, overall, you know, this building is, is not going to be, you know, visible to everyone, but I think that us kind of giving our usual comments for every type of building, but giving it for this, I think is really, um, great. So, you know, just articulation and, and how the building looks and the experience of, of going inside the building, um, all, all of that applies. So, um, hopefully you know, those comments kind of stuck with the architect. But yeah, I'm, uh, I would recommend it to, to move forward. Uh, I am curious to know, you know, what the architect thinks about the comments and if he has any questions for us. Um, so what his thoughts are. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. All very uh, good and insightful comments. Uh, appreciate the positive feedback and, um, and, uh, you know, I, have presented enough projects in front of uh, planning commissions to know uh, the difference between thoughtful comments and, and ones that seem uh, on the fly. And these uh, are, are very uh, good comments. I appreciate those. So, um, you know, we cert I think most of what I've heard tonight uh, focused around um, uh, some of the, the transitions of materials and uh, not only in, in, um, where they occur but in plane and uh, seeing if we can't make some small adjustments to to do that in a more uh, impactful way um, those uh, certainly seem like things that we can uh, uh, accommodate and incorporate um, and we'll certainly take those to heart and, and go back and study those things and uh, as to the um, the canopy um, we certainly uh, understand the, the potential architectural significance of that. Um, one comment that I, I did want to address had to do with the screening of the generator. So the existing generator and um, uh, cooling tower that are on uh, the south side of the property will basically be mimicking the screening that uh, occurs around those elements. So. Um, it doesn't show clearly on the plan, as you as you pointed out, but the intent is um, really to try and make the new generator sort of disappear with what's there. Um, you know, they're they're not beautiful architectural elements, but um, the 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 generator and the cooling tower that have been there have been there a long time, and my guess is that most people are used to seeing them there. So we're going to try and hide this in plain sight uh, along with what's there. So again, appreciate the comments. Certainly think that we can um, continue to finesse the design as we move forward. And uh, if you give us the opportunity to, uh, to move the project forward tonight, I'm happy to work with staff and uh, continue to, to uh, work on these items and um, would 
be happy to come back and make a presentation in the future or staff can can you know that's something that that you can uh, allow staff to work with us on so um i'll let you guys decide that but i do appreciate the comments great um thank you for that D does anyone have any questions or comments um either for the architect or, or just in general any? i'm ready to make a motion if you're ready to hear it sure so i move that we recommend uh i guess we recommend uh approval to, to the city council for project d20-0001 subject to the findings and conditions of the staff report and i i think that it can go through staff i don't think we need to see it come back here yeah. i would second that motion yeah i agree um okay uh, if john wants to do roll call we can go through uh yes I, I i just wanted to confirm that as part of your motion did you want the to direct the architect to look at the transition of materials before the project gets presented to council and look at the design and connections of the canopy to the existing buildings what he said yes thank okay. you all right so um Although, let me see, Commissioner uh, or Chair Ahi? Yes. Vice Chair Bodner? Yes. Commissioner Bresick? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Merrick? Yes. And Commissioner Meadows? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Great. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so we will be moving on to commissioners' reports and comments. Um, anyone have any reports or comments? Yes. Uh, I was the rep at the August 25th City Council meeting, which really had nothing for the Planning Commission in its totality. It had two design issues. One was an appeal of a design review commission approval of a two-story house in an area where mostly consistent character one-story houses. And um, it's the first in the neighborhood. There is no single-story overlay, so it is not uh, forbidden. But um, I spoke at that meeting as a um, individual to point out that I thought that it could have been a little more gracious in integrating a two-story structure in this neighborhood and city council agreed that the second story needed to be addressed to be less prominent and it's going back to council with that instruction and the other was a appeal of john biggs's declaration that a two-story tree house with a foundation was not actually a tree house and in that case i thought that the applicant who was appealing had been disingenuous because when he asked staff if there was any regulation for tree houses they said well no but he didn't describe what his tree house was and when the reality actually hit um i think that it was good that mr biggs was supported by council that if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck it's a duck that was not a tree house so the rest of the meeting was not anything that affected us. But it was an entertaining meeting, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad, glad to entertain you, Phoebe. So. <laughs> uh, great, thank you for that. Anyone, anyone else with uh, reports or comments? Uh, commission, uh, Chair Ahi, I do have, um, you know, we are losing some commissioners. Some people are terming out. So we do want to thank the commissioners for their service. And then also if Mr. Max uh, Schwarzer could stick around. Um, uh, we are in the next three to four months gonna be kicking off the update to the housing element uh, and our arena number is going up. So we would wanna get his input and also let the commission know that that will be a, a major uh, deliverable for the next year, year and a half. So, yeah. And, and I just wanna echo Guido's um, you know, thoughts regarding the, the commissioners that this is their last meeting. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with all of you. You've all demonstrated a, a love for the city of Los Altos and your 
your review of projects and your recommendations to the city council. And uh, we really thank you for your honest and straightforward feedback to staff and your, um, your, your working with us on the various projects that we brought before you. So uh, good luck to all of you and uh, we hope to see you around Los Altos in the future. And if I'd like, I'd I like to echo, echo my thanks too. I, I have learned so much um, from, from, from the, the commissioners and um, I've really appreciated working for them and, and just their disposition and their, um, how well they articulate their point of view and it's just been a pleasure. Been, it's been a privilege, I have to say. Um, this concludes for me 18 years of service and you know what, guys? It was my privilege. In the beginning, it was a different set of issues that were facing the city, and then I took a break, and there was, you came back, and there's another set equally complex of issues. So it's kind of interesting to see what's happened over the time. But it's been real, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck to you all. Yeah. And I, I also want to say it's been an honor and uh, I've learned so much from everybody and, uh, and, and John and Guido and, and all the stuff that's still not on here uh, or not on here, but who we worked with. So, you know, thank you so much. And you're right. That wasn't a tree house. confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah, I also wanted to say thank you to all the commissioners. It's, it's really been an honor to, to work with all of you. And uh, I did know today, tonight was our last meeting. So um, it's, it's a shame. I wish we had maybe a few more. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, so I guess we'll move on to if there's any potential future agenda items. Um, Chair, may I, may I add my comments, please? Yeah. Sure. Council Member on behalf of the city council, as well as my personal thanks to those of you who have served um, Phoebe for her longevity and the quality and uh, of, her, of her contributions, as well as how she helped me when I was first on planning commission, um, and to all of you who have served and helped in a time that it is a challenge to be doing land use planning in cities. And so just thank you so much for everything you have given and all the detail and hard work that you contribute to the city. We all appreciate it. Good here. Yes, thank you, Council Member Inander. Um, so John, is there any uh, future agenda items? Yeah, we have a few things coming up on the City Council agenda and the Planning Commission agenda for the, the group's interest. Um, next Tuesday, the 22nd of September, the City Council will be considering the REACH codes. Uh, these are the all-electric uh, regulations for Los Altos. Uh, that's going to be, the, I think, the highlight of that council meeting. At your meeting on the 1st of October, wrapping up 2020 pretty quickly here, um, we potentially will have uh, rules regarding boarding houses that we'll bring before you. The city attorney and her staff are working on those. Uh, it'll depend somewhat on our ability to get those wrapped up in time for the, the packet to go out on that meeting, but that's, that's possibly going to be considered by you. Um, with your approval or recommendation of approval tonight with the EOC uh, Center, that will be considered by the city council on October the 13th. On the 15th of October, we have a use permit for you for a fitness studio on the El Camino Real that'll be coming for your consideration. Um, and then one project that you looked at some time ago was the use permit for a school at 461 Orange. We have that slated to be considered by the city council at their meeting of October the 27th. So that takes us to the end of October. Lots of, lots of things we're still working on. Great, um, okay. Thank you for that. So um, I think that's about it. So again, just thank you so much to all the commissioners, uh, which is their last meeting tonight. So um, it's 810 and the meeting is adjourned. Right, thank, you. thank you all. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Safe. Hey, Max, this is Guido. Hey, thanks hey. for taking the time. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we want to hear all different viewpoints. And uh, yeah, so our uh, 
housing element every five years has to be updated. And yeah. um, the uh, RENA number, which is our regional housing number, it's, it's going to go yeah. up pretty significantly. So, you know, uh, obviously it's going to be a, you know, a lot of different opinions. Uh, and we're here, I'm here as staff just to kind of moderate it. But yeah, we would definitely like to rope you into that process if you have good ideas. I'm going to go ahead and email you if you give me your email. We're probably going to kick off the housing element not for maybe a couple months. I have to kind of prepare an RFP. Sure. But let me uh, let me email you and then if you want to ping me say in maybe mid-November. Sure. And then Max, let me just put here down for uh, housing stuff. Um, go ahead and give me your uh, email, Max. Sure, Max A. Dot Schwarzer, so M A X A. Dot S C H W A R Z E R at gmail.com. So it's just your last name, right? Let me just, because oh, yeah, it's just your last name's there. First, S C H. First name W A R Z E R. W A R Z E R. Max A. Schwarzer, is that right? Yep, Max A. Schwarzer at, at gmail.com. Gmail.com. And then are you tied into uh, the Los Altos today? There's an affordable housing group that Sue Russell is a part of? No, I'm not. Okay, let me, I'll just put you on the email because she's kind of a big proponent of housing stuff. So, uh, cool, Max, thanks. Max, uh, please ping me in mid November so I can give you an update on the city's housing element process. In the meantime, please connect with Sue from the Los Altos Affordable Housing. Uh, I think it's the Coalition. I, I, I always forget, Max, if it's Coalition or Alliance. So. <laughs> no worries. Coalition. Are you, you're, you're near probably your find them. I am. I can probably find them if I Google them. You know, I just emailed you. I just want to make sure you get it. Great, thanks. I'll uh, check Did you get it? Sure I want to make sure you got I, it. I will check and make sure it came through. Um, yep, you know Persico. Yep. All right, man. Yeah, look forward to hearing what you have to say. And, you know, as staff, we kind of follow what the council does and the city manager gives us. Of course, yeah. So, yeah. Of All course. Right, well, thanks for your time. No problem. You have a good evening. Thanks, you too.